Okay, hey there everybody, we are back with the help of a special camera woman. We're going to do 4-6 sums of geometric series, alright? So this is a geometric series because, you can see, we're multiplying by 3 to get to 6, we're multiplying by 3 to get to 18, we'd be multiplying by 3 to get to the next term, which would be 54. The dot 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 here means that it's going on forever, alright? So the way we would represent this with uh, summation notation is as follows, and you can definitely pause this and come back to it in a second. So how would we write this using summation notation if it goes forever? All right, well, we write down the sigma sign, and we're going to start at the first term, okay? And we're going to go forever, all right? So you could write it like this, forever. No, you can't do that, actually. We're going to do it like this. We're going to do it with infinity, all right? So we're going to go forever. Our explicit formula for doing this comes from the geometric series formula where we take the first term, okay, that's 2, and then we write down here, this is the common multiplier. What did I multiply 2 by to get to 6 and 6 by to get to 18? That's 3, and then I write up above it n minus 1, okay? We'll go into this more later. You don't need to know that. That's usually given to you, but this is then the sigma notation for how this series will be written. If you want to test it, you can just try plugging in 1 there for n, and you'll get 0. 3 to the 0 is 1, and 1 times 2 does give me 2. If I plug in 4, for instance, to find my fourth term, 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 to the third is 27. 27 times 2 is 54, so you can verify that this works. And we'll practice this. Um, but this is actually the second formula in our formula sheet. Okay, so that's so how we write sigma notation for the sum of a geometric series. All right, we can only add up these and get an actual answer if two things are true. Either it has to stop, there has to be an ending point, like it has to be plus, like uh, 54 times 3 would be 162. If it ended at 162, we could say this stops and we can add up all the numbers to get from the beginning to the end. Or else, if it goes on forever, this multiplier here must be less than 1. Okay? So if you need to, to stop this and write that down, do so, because that's really important, the two conditions. Okay? Now, we're going to come over to this other board, so if uh, really you'd follow me over here, we're going to do two examples from the book to get started. Okay? This is one that meets the first condition. Okay, you'll notice that this 3 plus 15 plus 75 goes up, but then it stops at a large number, but it does stop. So we can add up this, because it's a finite geometric series. And I'll add the word finite, meaning it stops at a certain point. It stops at this point. This is the formula that's right in the book. There's a yellow box. I'll explain how we get this formula later. But um, these terms should be familiar to you. This stands for the very first term. So we can sum this up from 3 all the way up to 9,375 by writing down the first term, 3, and then subtracting the last term, 9,375, multiplied by that ratio. That's the multiplier. That's the common ratio. With, in this case, like the last problem, nope, it's not like the last problem. This is 3 times 5 gives me 15. 15 times 5 gives me 75. So times 5, that's what r is, all over 1 minus whatever r is. So 1 minus 5. And uh, again, pause this if you want. Hit the calculator. Crunch the numbers. 3 minus 9,375 times 5 divided by, in this case, that's going to be negative 4, all right? And you'll see what the solution is. That's the problem number 2. So bring in that solution for homework tomorrow. This one is written in summation form, so we can use our summation smarts and get this one. I plug in 1 right here. Anything to the first power is itself, so that's going to be 5 times negative 1. My first term is just negative 5, okay? My second term, if I plug in 2 there, negative 1 squared, that's a positive 1. Positive 1 times 5 is just 5. And then plus, well, if I plug in 3 there, that's negative 1 to the third power is just negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Those give you positive 1 times, it's negative 1 again, and that's times 5 is negative 5. 
Well, you'll see this is just going to alternate negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And you can see that with pairs adding up to zeros, our, our last pair is going to be a negative 5, and that should be the sum. Okay, So we know that this thing is going to sum up to negative 5, but we can test it out in our formula and see if that works. They should agree. So my first term here is my first term there. That's negative 5. Then I do minus my last term. When I plug in 17, that's an odd number. Anytime a negative number goes to an odd number, it's going to be a negative 1 in this case, or a negative, but in this case with the 1, it's 1. So a negative 5 is my last term. So minus a negative 5. And then it's all over 1 minus, in this case, um, my multiplier. In this case, my multiplier is negative 1. And I'm going to crunch those numbers. Okay? So, um, oh, sorry, I have to take my last term. I apologize. I take my last term and I multiply it by r, just like I took my last term and I multiplied it by 5. I'm going to take my last term and then multiply it by negative 1. Okay? So once again, it's my first term minus my last term times the multiplier. My first term minus my last term times the multiplier. So that's minus 5 minus 5. That's 0. And, and then that's all over uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. 0 over 2 is 0, which tells me that I must have done something wrong right there. So what I probably did that was wrong was I forgot that if we're going from 1 to 17, we're going to get actually uh, 16 pairs. And when those pairs add up to 0, they should give me 0. Okay? So you can go back and check that. All right. Thanks a lot.